Here with your hometown forecast. Expect cool temperatures and clear skies as daytime highs top out at 60 degrees today here in the Santa Clarita Valley. Cloudy tomorrow with temps reaching 58 degrees and we'll see a 10 degree jump on Sunday. More rain is expected next week. Weekend lows will drop to the upper 40s. Get the skinny on fad diets with a seminar presented by Henry Mayo Fitness and Health this Wednesday, January 11th. Learn the difference between quick fix diets and ways of eating that will benefit you for a lifetime. Learn more at henrymayofitness.org. Have you ever been frustrated with people and you're like, this is common sense? Yeah. <laughs> Some people don't have common sense. You're remembering that you're a spiritual being having a human experience. It's not the other way around. I mean, most of it. <laughs> oh, now we're moving to most of it. Can we, can okay, we take create, responsibility for all of it? I create all of my own stress because I have um, to let go of control. Today on My Conscious Dad, you're going to get a peek into the inner workings of a father-daughter relationship, learning how to communicate effectively, expressing yourself thoroughly, and loving each other wholeheartedly. And now live from the KHDS studios in Old Town, New Hall, California, here's Jasmine Urbina and her dad, Alex. Good afternoon. You're listening to My Conscious Dad right here on your hometown station, AM 1220, KHTS. And today we are going to be talking about how to get your power back from rude people. First things first, I want to say good luck to you, Dad, um, trying to get people to hear this this segment. I think um, it, for me, uh, this is probably a topic that I would personally tune out of <laughs> just because I have a, a hard time dealing with uh, people uh, that get on my nerves. Well, I'm glad that you're honest enough to say it like that, to acknowledge it. I think that's the first step is for people to really look at themselves and say, hey, maybe there's something that's going on within me that I have, maybe this deep pet peeve that I have that's ingrained in me where you know when root when I see rude people it just tags me or it presses my buttons or uh, it just gets me to the point where my blood is boiling and that's the first step and I think that you know when you say good luck I'll take the challenge because this this is part of what the show is is about opening up new possibilities for people to see so that they end up having a breakthrough so they can master their lives so they can show up more powerfully in their life and you know we'll just do a 45 minute conversation about how to uh create new possibilities to have a perspective shift so that we're able to tolerate people that are rude and people that don't know how to you know be uh show up powerfully or or think positively and and we'll just open up a dialogue about it i started to write down some things actually actually i wrote down what would be the answer to that question how do you get your power back from rude people and for me the answer is kind of simple and again for for something that's simple to one person might not be simple for someone else unless they open their mindset and they're o- they have an open mind and they can wrap their mind around it whether they agree with it or not but if you b- can be open to it then now you have a chance at actually seeing it like that and when you can see it like that you can have a different kind of an experience so the answer to how to get your power back from rude people is you first you don't give it to them at all you don't give up your power to rude people you allow rude people to be rude um, and I wrote down some distinctive things I want to go over them and then I want you to kind of give me your insight or tell me what you're hearing me say and let's just kind of go back and forth and let's let's play with it a little bit so let's first start off with personal power is about perspective shifting so I'm gonna go over these four different distinctions and then let's see if we can wrap our mind around that and create a perspective shift so that I can go okay I can I can kind of see that or I would love to see that, or wow, I see that. And once you actually practice that and you can see it like that, all of a sudden you'll notice that you start showing up different in your life. So number one is allow people to have their own opinions. Number two is allow people to vent out their own frustrations and their own anger. Now I put a disclaimer here. So as long as it doesn't cross the line, and the the line is that as long as it doesn't get physical, as long as it's not abusive, so when we're talking about how to get your power back from rude people, we're talking about people that make rude comments or they make smart remarks or, you know, we're talking about the average rude person. So allow people to have their own opinions. Can you allow people to have their own frustrations and vent those frustrations and anger? Allow people to be dysfunctional without you thinking that they need to not be rude. And then the last one is to surrender your psychological resistance to other people choosing how to express themselves however they want. And then do all of that without taking any of that personal. 
So if you can just master those four distinctions without taking any of that personal, you'll be able to tolerate everybody. You can be in a crowd, you can be in groups, you can be in part of teams, you can be at work. You can be anywhere living your life in a powerful way without being in resistance to people being rude. Most of the time you think about it when someone's rude and you and you don't like it or you start confronting them or you start talking about them behind their back or whatever it is, it's really about you being in psychological resistance and not liking them being like that or thinking that they shouldn't be like that when obviously we have the option and the choice to choose to show up in life however we want so a lot of times i will say how arrogant of me to think that i shouldn't not let you be rude when that's how you choose to live your life you know i want to go back and touch on those um distinctions especially the one that says and i'm gonna look at your notes just so i could uh, make sure i get it right and it says um, allow people to vent their own frustrations and anger. And to me, I'm, I'm all about letting people vent and, and, and do their thing because I vent and I like to, to, to have somebody there to listen to me. Uh, but I think there's a point where people are venting and when they're taking it out on me or taking it out on you or whoever. And it, that's the part that, that, I guess I take personal when they're frustrated about something completely different and they're taking it out on me and they're frustrated with someone else and, and all of a sudden I'm the replacement for that person. I'm glad you brought that up. Now, can you see them being frustration at something being frustrated at something else at a different time at a different place and in front of you are you open to the possibility that it appears to you that they're taking it out on you rather than they're just getting it off their chest? Can you be open to the possibility that they're when you say venting that they're just releasing it and that you don't actually have to be standing there letting it fall on you you can actually like in your mind visualize yourself taking a side step to the side and letting them psychologically and verbally and mentally you know vomit on the side of you you don't actually have to be standing in front of it and a lot of times you know like you can create like a mental practice where you actually see yourself step left and you stand to the side of somebody that's verbally vomiting all of their stuff so what do you hear me say when i ask you are you open to the possibility that somebody that's taking out all of their frustration is not that they're taking it out on you they're just taking it out you just happen happen to be inserting yourself in front of them and hearing it as though they're dumping it on you like, why are you saying that to me? Why are you, why are you mad at me? And, and you can hear that in some arguments, right? Between boyfriend and girlfriend or husband and wife. The wife will come home or the husband will come home and they're, they're like, oh my God, I can't believe this. And you know, they're just ranting. And the other person's like, why are you taking that on, on me? And I want you to be open to the possibility that they're not. You just happen to be the person that they're in a relationship with that they need to buffer. They need a mirror. They need somebody to bounce all that stuff off of so that they can make sense of what's going on. And it's very challenging for some people to not be neutral when that person is trying to get that stuff off. A lot of times people take that and they carry it like, like hey, now, now, now this is my problem. Now this is my fault. When the other person their intention might not really have it be about you and about your fault they just needed a place to vent yeah i can see that and i can also see how maybe i know that they're venting i sometimes people even ask hey can i just vent mm -hmm. <laughs> and then i get mad at the end because i'm like whoa calm down yeah um but i can see how like you said i like how you said that um, they're just kind of speaking and then I'm inserting myself so it's one thing to just be there but there's probably a point where I'm putting myself so much into the situation where I'm like I, I can't breathe because I, I don't know what I did or I don't know what what happened like in one second it feels like all of a sudden everything in the relationship is wrong with me or something but um, really I think I'm, I'm the one who's now that you mention it, I'm the one who's putting myself into that drama or putting myself into that space. That's great. That's great insight. Here's an example. I just thought a great example. So if I have a client and I'm working with this client and working with them for a couple months and I'm challenging them and I'm really like giving them, you know, uh, challenges to, to overcome and to break through and they go out into their life. A week later, they have some challenges. They have uh, some rejection. They fall down. They come back in the next session and they're venting 
to me about me. They're being a victim to me and they're going, I, I can't believe you told me to do this and I did it and I got shut down and blah, blah. And so they're going off on me. We'll call it going off. I can sit there with a huge smile on my face and not take that personal. I can just see it as them venting their frustration about what happened and how it happened and the experience they had, but totally not hearing that she's making it about me. And I can have a big smile on my face. And a lot of times my clients will go, what are you smiling at? Right? Because they could be mad at me. And what are you smiling at? And I'm like, I'm smiling because you're giving yourself permission to let some stuff go. So I'm excited for you. And in their mind, it throws them off because they're like, but I'm mad about, I'm mad at you or I'm mad about what you did. And then I can separate myself from somebody's angst, anxiety, anger, and frustration. And I can choose to see it as, as their stuff. So I don't allow myself to get tagged by it. What I do though, is as they're sharing that, I'm hearing it from a compassionate place. And I am asking myself from a responsible version, which is, okay, how did I create that or co-create it? Or how was I part of that? And then I get to clean that up. And it usually starts off with an apology. Hey, I'm sorry you felt like that when I said those things to you or when I teed that up for you or when I asked you to do those things. My intention wasn't for you to get rejected or my intention wasn't for this. When I gave you those things or when I asked you to do those things, my vision of you was to actually have a breakthrough and have, have an amazing experience. But, but can you tell the difference of my calmness? Because I didn't get tagged or taken a personal. I'm not in reaction now. I'm not trying to defend myself or make her bad and wrong or him bad and wrong. I can be neutral and I can kind of support her in that. But that ta that's the, that step one is not taking it personal and not getting tagged. Yeah, I, I guess the, the part where I get trumped up or stuck is... I try to be neutral or I know, hey, you know, I tell myself, Jasmine, be neutral in this situation. <laughs> and I hear it. And as, as they're going on and on and on, and you could be sitting there for five minutes, 10 minutes. And there's a part where I stop being neutral and I'm like, okay, I got to stop. I got to like, I have to, like, there's like this inner desire, this like inner thing that's like, okay. And then just word vomit everything that I've been thinking. But it's cool because... What you're telling me is that you're in the practice. You know how we talk about on this show, everything is practice. Everything we do is about practicing. So you're in the practice. You're practicing the art of being neutral and not taking things personal. But in that practice, everyone has a tolerance level. Yours might be at a three or at a seven or a 12. Someone else might be at a half. So they can only handle allowing somebody to vent for half a minute. You might be able to allow someone to vent for four minutes or eight minutes. But the more you practice, the more you're able to hang in there longer and longer and have a higher tolerance for people's frustrations and their rudeness and their little stabs and their, you know, uh, throwing daggers at you by, you know, passive aggressiveness and all that kind of stuff. And you could just totally, the, the more you practice it, the better you get, the more tolerance you have for it. So I'm excited when you tell me that because what you're saying is I only dad I only have a tolerance to a certain point and then after there's that one pivotal point where I just lose it and then I end up you know it it, it just triggers me so it, it takes for you to keep practicing that till you get really good at it yeah and you know what another thing is that even when I'm in that place and and I know sometimes I'll tell you know have to tell myself like oh fight it fight it fight it <laughs> <laughs> and it makes me wonder like I'm not even at one point I'm not even listening to the rest of what they're saying it was like me dwelling on the beginning or dwelling on the way they're saying it or or whatever it is that that gets me so uh, you know r riled up or whatever but um, I guess if I could ask you for tips or advice on how to how to make that tolerance level longer i know that with time and experience and more people venting to me and those those situations happening i'll, I'll get it but is there a faster way <laughs> you know there are some tools that i give my clients and it, what it is is let's say it's a husband and wife i will teach them the distinction between dumping and venting so dumping is you standing in the way and they're just verbally vomiting on you and then it's like like that nickelodeon show where all that green goo comes falling on you and you're you feel like you know this happened to me you're doing this to me that's dumping venting is a distinction that you have to tee up with your partner 
and I teach my clients how to vent with each other. And this is how to communicate in an effective way, in a healthy way. So what it would look like is, hey, Jazz, I have something that's bothering me. Uh, do I have permission to vent with you? And you say yes. Now, when you say yes, I've taught you both, you and me, how to hear the word vent. And vent is a key word to hear that what they're going to vent about has nothing to do with me. Right now, I'm just going to be in service to you. I'm going to be a great listener. I'm going to be empathetic. I'm going to be compassionate. And I'm just going to be that space, that compassionate, loving, empathetic space for you to just get it off your chest. Even if some of it has to do with me. Like, you know, I'm really frustrated because last Friday you said you were going to be here and you didn't. And you let me down. And, right? and, you're, and there's a lot of the you daggers are coming out. I got to remember that I'm going to create that safe, neutral, loving, compassionate space for you just to get it off. Then when you're done, then I can do some cleanup work. But most of us don't even get past that part. We listen from hearing them vent and we're trying to cherry pick all the pieces where they're blaming us. And if we hear one of the blames, then we get triggered and then we go into reaction and then we go into defending ourselves. Now the venting turned into a full blown argument. And that's unhealthy. That's not the healthy way to communicate with each other. So I teach couples or, or partners or teams how to communicate effectively. And part of that is the tee up. Do a, do a powerful tee up. Hey Jazz, there's something that's really bothering me. It was regarding what you said yesterday. I'd love to have permission to vent. Do I have permission to vent? And then when you say... Yes. Yes. That's 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 a trigger for you to go, okay, great. I'm going to be in service to you. Now, now a, a more uh, effective way to say that in addition is to say, what I'm going to say is me just being the victim here and whining and complaining about it, but I need to get it off my chest. Don't take this personal because it's really not about you. It's about me. It's about how I took it. It's about how I perceived it. It's about, you know, it's my feelings that got hurt. There's nothing that you did specifically. You were probably just telling me what you needed to say, or maybe you were just being honest or blunt. But it, but I get to take the responsible version. But I need to run it. I need to vent for a minute. So please don't take it personal. Don't get defensive. I just need you to hear me out. And by me giving those five or six distinctive keywords, do you feel better allowing me to vent and not taking it personal? Yeah, uh, I also think that sometimes, uh, at least, you know, for me, <laughs> sometimes I forget and it's very easy for me to 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 just take it out of my family, especially, or, or go into reaction to people that I'm close with. There's times, though, where even yeah, just out in public or at work where I have to deal with, uh, quote unquote, rude people or difficult people, and they come, they come at me, which is so much, um, like they've been practicing it in the mirror. Like, as soon as I get there, I'm just going to destroy her. And I'm like, sitting there like, I, I can't be rude to this person. I'm at work or I'm in public or I don't know them. So I'm more inclined, I guess, to be to be rude back or or be defensive when it's like my family or somebody so I, i'm okay with with strangers um <laughs> but if you can do it with strangers and you can do it in a work environment because in your mind you flip the switch and said that's not appropriate at work or i'm at work i'm supposed to be in service and uh, and you know we all come from in the business world that the the, the customer's always right or their feelings are valid like don't discredit their feelings if that's what they're feeling so if you're able to do it in a work environment you should be able to do it anywhere I and know. that's and that's <laughs> and it's but it's common I'll have people tell me Alex I know this and I do this really good outside of my home but when it comes to my kids I get tagged or when it comes to my husband it irks me or it sends me off or it, you know so it's it's a common theme where people will have it unwired when it comes to their family members or people they care about and I think a lot of that has to do with a belief that we have that you're supposed to love me and if you love me you're not supposed to take out your anger on me right we have that belief instead of no you love me and you're a human being and you still have your own stuff and I need to get to I get to be here to support you in that you know what you're right because what I do is when let's say an, an older gentleman comes in and, and he's angry with me um i carry it a backstory for him okay you know what he's old leave him alone <laughs> and i come up with reasons why they're so rude it's perfect i love that you know and we're going to talk about this in the next segment and it's another distinction that i didn't put in but you reminded me of it when people are rude why do you and 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 
we had someone on Facebook, Carmen, asked this question. And it might be kind of directed towards her. She's asking, how can I stop taking everything personal and allowing people to control me? There's a two-part qu question in that, but I'll, I'll address what we're talking about here regarding that first part about how not to take things personal. When people are rude or obnoxious or they're, or they're taking their, it appears they're taking their anger out on you, instead of making it about me, come up with a story in your mind that they might be having a hard day, that they might have a lot of dysfunction, that she might be um, have a lot of uh, self-worth uh, issues or some self-doubt. He might really be afraid. They might be suffering. They might be, you know, um, going through a lot in their mind. She might have just lost a father or a dad to a suicide attempt. He might be yada 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 D does that make sense when somebody's going off on you or they're being rude or they're th it appears that they're doing something to you why do we automatically make it about me why can't we come up with a story and make it about them it's their stuff to separate their dysfunctions their um unhealthy way of expressing themselves is all their stuff and visualize yourself standing back out of the way of the verbal vomit and allowing them to have the space to do that without you getting tagged and you giving up your power to them. And that's why we started off the show with how do I get my power back from rude people? First off, don't give it to them in the first place. Don't be in, react, in, in resistance to it. Don't react to it. And that all starts with first, don't take it personal. We got to go on a break. We got to go on a break. So we'll be right back. Stay tuned for more of My Conscious Dad right here on your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS.